guys, welcome to another episode of A Shot of Rails. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about hash selector pattern. And uh, I've added a few more things to my uh, Flash helper. Uh, I'm going to upload the entire code base so you guys can see it yourself. But essentially what we're doing here is, uh, you know, right now our Flash is, uh, you know, before our Flash was just like one color, like everything was just one color. So what I've done here is basically I've added the color selection. So basically if it's an error, it's going to render the red color. And then if it's a success, uh, so if I go ahead and create a new post here and I do that, click save, it's going to show green. Great. So uh, generally, you know, it's this sort of stuff is pretty simple. You might go ahead and say, hey, we can use a case switch for that or we can use an if. Um, and I'm going to show you another way that I think is not that common. Like I haven't seen people talk too much about it. Maybe a lot of people use it. Maybe it's so obvious that this is such a stupid video. Uh, but I'm just, I just haven't seen it used that much. And we use it a lot in our agency, in our school. So I just wanted to, to put it out there and, uh, you know, let you guys know about it. Um, so basically the alert box, I'm just referencing off this thing here. So basically these classes are what I'm using. Uh, so if it's a success, it returns a green one. If it's an info, it returns a blue one. If it's a warning, it returns a yellow one. Error returns alert danger. So uh, let's take a look at the code. So I'm gonna go over here into the flash helper. So this is usually what one would do, right? So we have the flash type that we got from, you know, from, from our controller. And uh, if it's a success, we will all return alert success. Error, we'd return danger, warn, we return warning, info, return alert info. But check this out. There's like three else ifs here. This code is actually very difficult to read for my eyes. Like the actual logic is, it's, it's all mixed into the result, right? So I would, normally never write this sort of code like this else if else if else if else if I mean I can't even say it it's just horrible like I, I just hate reading this 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 chunk of code right here so you would say well hey why don't we just use a k switch and let's this is what it looks like with the k switch and it is a lot cleaner I mean uh, you could clean this up a tad you know you just go in there like that so this does clean it up a lot I mean look this looks much better the problem with case switch though is it's really, really, really slow uh, compared to ifs. So what can we do to like find a better solution? Well, we can use hashes. Uh, I mean, a cache is a key value, right? We have a key over here and we have a value here. So we can just use the hash, right? So here we have the success. It's going to return alert success. Error is going to return alert danger, uh, danger and then note is going to turn info and warn is going to turn alert warning very, very straightforward and simple. And all we're doing here is we're passing the flash type as a selector. And basically whatever, you know, the, the, the type is, it's going to choose a result based on, you know, the, whatever the key is. Right. So it's pretty simple. Um, so this code is much cleaner. It's much more concise. Uh, it's four lines rather than over here. We have six lines and else if, I mean, don't even, don't even look at that. I mean, that's just horrendous. Right. So it is much cleaner. Uh, it is much better. So in cases like this, it's very, very handy. Yeah. So, okay. So this is just some simple text. We're just outputting simple text. What if we want to use something like methods? We want to call other methods in our helpers or other methods elsewhere, or whatever, wherever it is we want to reference. You can do that. I mean, if you use a hash, you can call a method. So let me just show you another example over here. So uh, I'm going to go back to the browser for just a, a, a minute. I'm going to go into the post over here. I can add a comment. I click create, bam, we create the comment. Very, very simple. Let's go back to the controller comments over here. So normally we would do something like this, right? So let's let me comment this out just for, for a sec. So normally we would do something like this. We have if comment dot save respond with, okay, there's a typo there. It respond with, and then whatever you want to respond with, right? And then if it's an error, we handle the error some way or the other. So this is a, if, else case uh, where we're using if else to render you know the different cases which is fine i mean in this case the if else is very simple if the comment saves successfully we do one thing if it doesn't save we handle the error very very simple but i'm just going to show you another scenario generally in this case i would not use something like this because the if else is already readable it's simple enough but if it starts to get complicated and you have three four else if, else if, else if, I would consider refactoring that and using something like this. 
right? Like a hash selector pattern. So basically what's, let me just walk you through this code here. What's happening here is basically we're passing the comment.save as the selector. It's either gonna return true or false, right? If the comment can save successfully, it's gonna return true. If not, it's gonna return false. And then based on the different cases, we handle, you know, whatever it is we wanna handle. If it successfully saves, we respond it with the post and comment. And if it fails, we run, we handle the error. So the only thing we need to take care of is we need to wrap our method in a proc and use self. So otherwise it just won't work, um, you know, because a hash is just to, supposed to return the value. It's not, it's not gonna run any method. So what we get is when we, once we get the proc, we have to do a call on it. Um, that's all you need to do. Uh, so in other cases where, you know, if you have else if else if maybe in your helper or, you know, if you're using the decorator pattern, wherever it is you want to use your, your else if, if you have multiple else if, cons you can consider refactoring that code and use something like a hash selector pattern uh, in order to clean up your code. It's much more concise. It's much more readable in my opinion. And it's helped us a lot, uh, you know, in our, in our own code base at Codemy. So that's pretty much it. But before I leave you guys, I just want to show you something. Over here, I have a, a FizzBuzz example. Uh, if you're not familiar with FizzBuzz, just go ahead and Google it and you'll find it. So here's a FizzBuzz. This is a little bit extreme. Uh, normally, uh, the, the if solution would have been the best. Uh, but in this case, I've taken it uh, to the, you know the, another level. So I just have this uh, FizzBuzz uh, thing outputting uh, you know, just using the hash selector pattern. So over here we have the output data, which says what if it's three, we put fizz. If it's five, we put buzz. And if it's 15, we put, you know, fizz buzz or whatever it is you want to output. And we have a selector pattern here. Uh, you know, the selector over here, which is used to select the different answers based on, you know, the calculation that's done over here. So the beauty of this thing is basically the logic, the actual logic and algorithm is separate from the results, right? That's basically the idea behind the hash selector pattern. That's what makes it cleaner is because it's separate. So you don't have to care what this is. You don't have to care what this does. All you know is when this number is, is put into the hash, this is the result we get. That's all you have to see. So it's it's very it's separate from the if. So you know like that when you're testing this thing, you know, you're testing one thing at a time. You're not testing the result, you're just testing what this outputs, right? So uh, it's cleaner, it's easier to read, uh, you know, and uh, you know, some might argue that this is more difficult to read. And I, you know, it's difficult for me to show you, I, I can't really show you some of the code base that we're, we're using, uh, you know, in, in our own apps, but generally, uh, you know, you, once you know what it is, you know how it works, you'll be able to come up with solutions using the hash selector pattern. So I suggest you guys give it a try. Um, I'm going to post a link to this gist so you can take a look at it. And yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys liked the video. And uh, please like the video if you like it. If you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it. Um, and yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks.